So I wanted to make this video short and sweet just to kind of really prove my point. We were talking about Camp Neary quite recently and this fig variety has really some serious drying capabilities and I said that if I really let the figs hang on the tree a bit longer they will start to really dry on the tree and even produce these cork tints. And that's exactly what has happened here is that I have like pretty much almost some legitimately dried Campanieri figs. I mean, obviously I could go a little longer. The amazing ability for this fig to withstand the elements, it's even been raining. Um, and it's really just not seemed to matter. The other crazy thing is that this fig really hangs well on the tree. It doesn't detach very easily. So it could sit here for quite some time, as long as nothing bothers it. There's no ants, critters. This one here had a lot of ants that were getting into it because the side had been exposed to the elements. And that's the, the crazy thing about it too, is that even though the interior is now exposed to the outside elements, most other figs would just completely start to mold or ferment, spoil in some way. But there are just certain figs, guys, that have that amazing resistance. They have a high enough bricks within them that prevents that mold, prevents that spoilage from occurring, and you're able to still eat them um, even if they've split. Some other figs that I've talked about in the past are, we have, uh, you know, Campaneri, we have Ron de Bordeaux, we have Moro de Caneva. So those three figs I mentioned, Moro de Caneva and Ron de Bordeaux and Campaneri, they, they really just have that great ability to resist all of those outside elements trying to destroy it. You know, all of that fermentation, that mold, that spoilage that you might see in a lot of your figs in humid climates, it just really won't be there because the bricks is high enough in those fruits. And it's really quite a special characteristic to have, I think, higher bricks, enough of a high bricks to prevent all these bad things from happening. You know, and maybe if you live somewhere a bit rainier than I, um, you won't get that high enough bricks because un the unfortunate part about it is that the more moisture in the soil that there is throughout the season, the less bricks that this fruit will have. So if you're really critical or you're really careful about you know, exactly giving your figs the right amount of water when it comes to them actually ripening and maybe it's gonna rain or maybe the fig is gonna split or crack, you're then gonna have a high enough bricks to fight those outside elements. And certain varieties just do that way better than others like the three I mentioned. So even though Ron de Bordeaux is, is round and Campanieri is also round and, or you could call it your Ciolato, they're typically not that great with splitting, although I would argue Campanieri really isn't all that bad, to be honest. It does hang in, typically in the right way to shed that water off the fig and prevent that water from absorbing into the skin of the fig and also expanding to a point where it's gonna actually split. But it's not like it's immune like some other figs, like Moro de Caneva I've shown you guys is like basically immune to splitting. Um, it's as good as it gets really because of the way it sheds that water off of the fig and the water almost never hits the eye of the fruit. So, you know, it's not like Campanieri is the worst, but it certainly can split. And even though it has split in the past, even just a week ago it split, it doesn't seem to matter because the fruit is just so good at resisting those outside elements because of its higher bricks. So I think it's a really important characteristic that people just don't talk about. And I wanna cut this open for you guys now because this is a real treat. And I have, a, as I showed you guys, two more that I can eat. But this should really wow me. This is really what figs are all about here, guys. All right, so we've got a little bit of ants, potentially some dead ants in there. But you know what, I'm not, I'm not afraid. I've eaten many ants over my life growing fruit. People seem to really get weirded out by it. I'm still gonna thoroughly enjoy this piece of fruit. All right, let's try it. And you know what? There is a little bit of that. There is a little bit of mold in here. So I stand corrected to some extent 
you know, it's not like these figs are just totally immune to any problems, but it's basically as good as it gets. Let's try this. Oh my God. Mm. Wow. It's so fruity. It's crunchy like a dried fig. This is, it's such a treat. And you know what, if you live in a dry place, that's the beauty of it, is that you're gonna get this like every time. If you're just slightly patient, you're gonna get these dried fruits pretty much every single time. Some people, someone might be thinking, oh Ross, it was crunchy because of the ants you ate. <laughs> Maybe. But you know, when they're dried like this, you really get the seeds. The berry flavor is so fruity and so intense at this point. You know, there's less water and when there's less water in the fruits because the, the water is slowly sort of, I guess in a sense evaporating when you have a dried fruit like that, the flavors are now concentrating. So it's not like, you know, maybe there is some sort of uh, higher bricks that's continually happening in terms of the sugars are continuing to increase, but for the most part, it's really the absence of water that really tends to change these, these fruits. The texture is very different, it's very chewy, it's still very sticky, still very jammy. And you know what, the nice part about dried figs is that you can have you know, your different consistencies of them and determine at which point do you like them the best. Do you like them totally dried, you know, like you would get at the store? Do you like the interior a bit moist? When I grow persimmons and I make myself hoshigaki every year, they're incredible because what you can do is have the outside have this nice dried fruit date-like consistency and then the inside still gooey and jammy like a fig. And it just creates the most amazing dried, fig, dried fruit really you could think of. It's definitely better than this. But how incredible, guys, is this you know, happening here in a humid place? I mean, it just rained so much. So I don't know how someone could argue against this piece of fruit. I love it. I thank you guys for watching. I just wanted to clear this up with everybody. You know, kind of hold me to uh, my word as a sense, in a sense. And uh, have I ever steered you guys wrong? We'll see you soon, all right? Thanks for watching. Take care, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you for the next one.